Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. Today we are going to be talking about six of my favorite supercars of all time and with reasons why I love them so much. But before we get going, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and let's straight away jump to number six, which happens to be none other than the Audi R8. It's a stellar looking car. It changed Audi's image as well. The R8 offers great grip amazing performance and that V10 engine is just stellar. I have driven quite a few right from the first gen to the second gen as well as the LMX. Absolutely mind-boggling. The quattro traction is just out of the world. The first gen was of course more charming. It came with a V8 option as well, but I've only driven the V10. Right from the sound to the high revving nature of the 5.2 liter naturally aspirated V10, which redlines all the way to 8,500 RPM, all make you go crazy. The R8 makes 600 horsepower and handles well too. You can call it the Lamborghini Huracan on a budget because it shares its engine and platform with it. It costs rupees 3.5 crores, rupees 60 lakhs less than the Huracan. We'll better get the Lambo. Fun fact, Audi has paid millions to Marvel to promote the R8 and it has worked brilliantly. The first gen also came with a gated manual. Unfortunately, the second gen neither gets a manual nor a V8 option. Number 5. The Mercedes AMG GT. This car looks absolutely gorgeous with its 4.574579 km long hood and of course the well appointed interior typical of a Mercedes. <laughs> so many variants of the AMG GT have been launched but all of them are only available globally right from the GT. GTS, GTC, GTR, GTR Pro, GTR Black Series and Roadster versions of almost all of them. All versions of the Mercedes AMG GT are powered by a 4 litre bi-turbo V8 and the output varies according to the variant of the car. This engine is so good that it's the sole engine which powers all the AMG cars. course in a different state of tune. But the AMG GT isn't about outright performance. It's actually slower than the E63S. Yes, that's right. The track focused AMG GTR goes from 0 to 100 km per hour in 3.6 seconds, whereas the E63 AMG takes 3.4 seconds only. GT is about handling with power going to the rear wheels it's pinpoint accurate but super stiff too fact, why can't Mercedes make the AMG GT a 4MATIC? Because the transmission is placed on the rear axle and there isn't much space at the front. But the next generation version of the AMG GT is likely to get 4MATIC. Carbon monoxide in my lungs, like straight away. Number 4, Nissan GTR. Now yes, it might be more sports car and less supercar, but f classifications because this is a car which can kick a supercar's I've driven it on the track, I've driven it on the road as well and trust me, the Nissan GTR defies physics to a certain extent thanks to extremely superior engineering. All of a sudden it's like a rocket launching. The 3.8 litre V6 motor is actually handcrafted 
and produces 550 horsepower and above depending on the variant on offer. It goes from 0 to 100 km per hour in just 2.8 seconds. The top speed is 330 km per hour. Oh my god, GTR, I love you. Oh. The GTR possesses a ton of technology, including the advanced four-wheel drive system, which ensures superior handling and amazing leech-like grip at all given times. And then, bang! <laughs> I mean, it's not supposed to accelerate like that. The infotainment system is also thoroughly loaded. It's no less than a PlayStation because it offers a ton of telemetry data. Really nice to hold says GTR over here. It is called Godzilla for a reason and has won a ton of awards too. However, we need a comprehensive update to the R35. Nissan though is sleeping at the moment. Fun fact, the GTR actually made the map of India at the Sambar Lake in Rajasthan to celebrate the 68th Republic Day of India. It was actually a record. How cool is that? Number 3. The Lamborghini Huracan The prettier, sexier, faster and more expensive twin of the Audi R8, the Huracan looks like an absolute beast and goes like a hoot on steroids. The 5.2 litre V10 motor is an absolute gem, is naturally aspirated, res f fast and goes all the way to its red line of 8500 rpm in a jiffy. It sounds epic too. It's so good that it makes its elder brother look weak and old. Sorry, a vent, a door. Look at the Lambo. The light quality of this car absolutely sucks. I liked it more than the Aventador any given day. But Lamborghini being superior to Audi, pulled rank and produces more power than the R8 at 640 bhp, making it even more exciting to drive. In fact, 0 to 100 km per hour under 3 seconds, 0 to 200 km per hour under 9 seconds, and a top speed of 325 km per hour makes the Huracan a very exciting bull to drive. Like the R8, the Huracan can also be got in rear wheel drive configuration. Saves money, increases the fun, but also increases the insurance premium. Lamborghini chalai jane ho. Fun fact, Audi actually assembles the chassis of the Huracan and couriers it to Lamborghini in Italy where the car is actually produced. It's similar to what VW does with Bugatti because the parts of the Chiron are actually made by VW in Germany and then shipped to France where the Chiron assembly actually happens. But the braking performance is mind numbing. Love the sound from the motor. Love number two. McLaren 720S. When does it happen that a car maker actually undercoats the power figure? Well, overcoating definitely happens, but undercoating is only done by one brand. McLaren because the 720s actually produces close to 800 horsepower and off we go straight away let me get into the gas and oh my god it absolutely rolls and that's the reason it eats the Ferrari 488 Pista as well as the Lamborghini Aventador on a racetrack comfortably The McLaren 720S is the most exciting supercar of late. It has so much tech in it, right from the dihedral doors to that instrument cluster which can be changed with a touch of a button. It's got a very advanced suspension system. It lacks air vents on the body just for that aesthetic appeal with really smart engineering to channel air from the front all the way to the rear so that the engine can breathe. In fact, when you turn on the car, the engine glows red. The 720S also has got variable drift control and the list goes on and on and on. This car has great traction for a rear wheel drive car and is super fast as well. 0 to 100 km per hour takes just 2.9 seconds. 0 to 200 km per hour takes just 7.8 seconds. And the top whack, that's 341 km per hour. Fun fact, McLaren actually does not make engines. It outsources the production of the powertrain to UK-based Ricardo. In fact, 
This company has been making engines for McLaren since 2011 and has supplied 15,000 units till date. The same brand actually also helped with the production of the gearbox for the McLaren F1 back in the 90s. No wonder Ricciardo joined McLaren recently. The way the race pool. Number one. Easy to guess the number one car on this list, but for that you have to see this, rather you have to hear this. Can you guess the car? Yes, it is the Ferrari 458 Italia. It uses a 4.5 litre V8 engine but the highlight is that it's actually naturally aspirated the last of the Ferrari V8s without a turbo. An output of 562 horsepower might seem less considering this list has a lot more powerful cars but it makes its peak power output at redline which is at 9000 RPM. kilometers per hour takes 3.4 seconds top speed is 340 kilometers per hour yes it might feel slow compared to other modern competition it is an old car it got discontinued in 2015 but let's not forget it's the feeling of driving a ferrari 458 which is absolutely unparalleled because it makes you go nuts and also the way it pulls you go wet in your pants just listen to this okay The 7-speed Getrag automatic transmission on the Ferrari 458 is actually shared with the Mercedes SLS AMG. Downshift, downshift, downshift. We are in second. It is the first regular Ferrari. What the f is a regular Ferrari? I mean a non-limited edition Ferrari to not get the option of a manual transmission. The Speciale version of the Ferrari 458 cost 4x the price in the used car market right now making it really exquisite because not only it has more tech and lesser weight it is also faster because it produces 600 ps of power that's not all it shaves almost half a second from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour and goes from 0 to 200 kilometers per hour in just 9.1 seconds <laughs> So guys, these are the six supercars I absolutely love and enjoy driving. Absolutely sensational. Off we go. Oh my lord, what happened? All of a sudden, like another nuclear reaction. My goodness, this car is so awesome. It is so quick. But here, every time I downshift, oh my god, what a sound! It's an expensive car. It's more expensive than in a 488 Pista. <laughs> the 
aggressive downshifts. I mean, it downshifts supremely aggressive, and it is so composed around the corners. So much feed, so much feedback. which are your six dream supercars let me know in the comment section below make sure they're supercars not hypercars or sports cars and if you like this vlog well let's keep a target of at least 1174 likes on this video and that's all for today subscribe bye bye take care